Hello, we're here today to talk about the value mapping solution we've developed here at Visual Decisions to create business cases and implementation plans for smart factory solutions. We will get started today by looking at what some outside agencies deem possible with Industry 4.0, then dive into the approach we take at Visual Decisions to see how much benefit your company can gain. This chart from the World Economic Forum shows the potential impact on operational performance for lighthouse implementations of smart factory solutions. There are massive improvements in factory output and OEE, along with significant decreases in cost of quality and cost of product. There are also significant positive impacts to manufacturing agility. There are possible reductions to lot size, along with associated reductions to change over time, inventory, and lead time. Additionally, there can be reductions in the time to market for new products. All of these improvements allow companies to rapidly respond to the dynamic world we find ourselves in today. Each of these changes is a significant help in responding to rapid changes in demand, supply chain constraints, and personnel issues. Finally, smart factory solutions can have a large impact on sustainability issues, such as waste reduction and energy efficiency increases. Most large corporations produce a green report card or sustainability reports. Smart factory initiatives can be one key in helping to improve on many of these metrics. But there's also a problem with studies like this. Unfortunately, these often form the basis of value propositions for vendors in this space. There will be a spreadsheet from these vendors that varies from bare bones to very fancy, but ultimately the logic will come down to, quote unquote, usually we can save customers X percent on this metric, or the World Economic Forum says that companies can usually improve quality costs by five to 90%. Uh, to me, and most CFOs I've ever talked to, that really isn't good enough. The CFO wants to know what the initiative is going to save his company and how those savings are actually going to come about. So I developed our value mapping solution to answer those questions instead of asking for a big leap of faith. So I'll work my way there, uh, but. Uh, take it step by step. The most common target for companies implementing Industry 4.0 solutions or smart factory solutions is to increase the plant efficiency or utilization as measured by OEE. Uh, typical OEE levels can vary significantly by industry. Uh, for many industries, though, uh, the best in class is around 85%. Uh, many companies in the industry, in those industries, are operating at 40 to 60%. Uh, some companies that I've been to are significantly below that. Obviously, if you're losing that much capacity, you're running with more people and equipment than necessary. But how can you actually figure out how much impact that capacity increase would have on the bottom line? One way would be where a, capacity, uh, a company is capacity constrained. In that case, if they can make more, they can sell more and get a revenue increase. Since the fixed costs would remain nearly the same in this case, the additional revenue would be highly profitable for the company. Another way to improve financials with increased efficiency is to reduce the hours of operation required to produce the same output for the factory. This could lead to reductions in overtime spend, overall labor costs, utilities such as electricity or gas, and more. Uh, the final example, for now is to take that additional time with the factory and perform additional changeovers and cycle through different uh, produced items more rapidly. This will re lead to reduced, uh, excuse me, this will lead to reductions in finished goods inventory, more responsiveness within manufacturing to changing demand and other benefits. So there are many financial benefits uh, to just OEE, and there's a lot of additional financial benefits that can be created from implementing smart factory solutions and improving overall operational performance. Uh, the next slide details how many line items on a typical income statement or balance sheet can be improved with these initiatives. 
So the potential impacts on a P&L or balance sheet for a company are very broad. There are a number of direct and indirect ways that revenues can be increased. There are also a wide variety of impacts on costs, whether it's materials, labor, outsourcing, logistics, maintenance, utilities, and more. Um, additionally, there can be major impacts on reductions in inventory and capital spending avoidance on plant property and equipment. It's a fair question though, to ask how these gains get created. After all, that's going to be the question asked by the executives before they approve a project in this area. So at Visual Decisions, we created a tool that helps map the enabling capabilities provided by Smart Factory Solutions through functional improvements uh, to metrics such as OEE on all the way to the financial impacts on the financial statements. So let's take a look at how we do that. We start off with the top-down uh, benefits case. What are the key initiatives that the business is trying to achieve? Uh, that might be better throughput, it might be better quality, it might be reducing inventory or time to market or any number of different initiatives or some combination of the above. Then for each one of those, we look at the impediments to increased performance. What are the th key things that are standing in the way of achieving the top level goals? We complete this part of the analysis then by looking for the root causes for each one of those different impediments. If we don't have the time to perform a complete root cause analysis, we can at least try to drill down to find causes that we can take direct, act, direct actions to mitigate or eliminate. So next we jump to the other side of the diagram. Uh, what are the business capabilities we could put in place that would directly address those root causes of performance? We think about what kind of changes in culture we need to make. What are the training processes that we could put in place? What are the process changes that would utilize the new data and so forth? These are the things that we're putting in place so that manufacturing can utilize those uh, solutions most effectively. Those process changes and the cultural changes are really what are going to drive the benefits and the outcomes for us. So then we map the cap capabilities back to the Industry 4.0 enablers that make all of those capabilities possible. Uh, these enablers could be something like data collection through IIoT, visualization of standard work with augmented reality, or supporting things with machine learning. Uh, performing the analysis in this way gives us a roadmap of exactly how these technologies are going to drive the benefits for the business. The roadmap includes uh, training, cultural change, process change, and anything else required to achieve the goals. We know exactly what root causes for current performance we're trying to address and how to track our progress. So the value mapping solution itself. I'll get into an actual uh, demonstration of the solution in a minute, but for now, uh, I just wanna highlight some key features here. Uh, it has a very simple workflow. Uh, it's pre-configured root cause analysis uh, so that based on our decades of experience in the field, we know what are the root causes for a lot of different types of failures, and we can easily add to that list as we go along. And then guided solution capability mapping process. Uh, so the default mappings make this very easy in terms of putting that solution uh, bill of materials together, so to speak. And uh, we have a deep knowledge base built into the product. Uh, it has capability of generating that value prop, uh, proposition automatically once uh, those inputs are put in place and very extensible with different financial elements, opportunities, causal factors, and the relationships between all of those. So it leads the user through a kind of structured discovery process. And uh, again, we look at those opportunities. What are the inputs for each one of the opportunities that's selected? Uh, what are the causal factors that really drive um, you know, the behavior there? And then what are the enablers that can be put in place that address those causal factors? So when we look at something like OEE and how we're actually going to translate that um, or what kind of an impact we can have on the OEE with uh, smart uh, factory solutions, 
we start off with you know OEE, we can break that down. Uh, I use this example because there's an industry standard here in terms of breaking that down into the causal factors of unplanned stops, changeover, short stops, reduced speed, et cetera. And then when we look at each one of those, we can uh, look through uh, the different capabilities that we're putting in place as a business and how those actually tie into uh, these different causes for performance. And beyond just OEE, uh, we've actually done an extensive array of mappings of different uh, opportunities or different KPIs um, on you know, the functional side of the business, and then mapping those to uh, the financial statements as well as the uh, you know, different causal factors that uh, create or lead to the performance in those different areas. So with that, uh, let me actually hop over to the software and walk through a demonstration. So uh, this is kind of the home page that someone comes to. Uh, they can you know, log out, they can uh, change what customer uh, they're working with if this is on the part of a vendor or the customer may be you know, individual plants or even individual lines. Uh, if you're using this within a you know, manufacturing organization. So then um, I can you know, scroll down and see some of the uh, charts and so forth that you know, represent the current status. But in this case, what I'll do is I'll walk through uh, the actual workflow. So starting with the opportunities, what I'm trying to do with this list is, again, we have a very simple list uh, in this particular case that uh, I've narrowed down for the demonstration, but we do have that very extensive list um, that you know, is available to us. But in this particular case, I can pick from OEE or lead time or overall labor effectiveness, uh, how much overtime I have, um, finished goods inventory, on time and full issues and so forth. And I can pick which of those is the most important for my business. And uh, then next, uh, based on what I've selected, it's going to ask me a series of questions. So for OEE, uh, sticking with that example, uh, if we're looking to translate that into uh, you know, bottom line impact of increasing our efficiency, there's a number of different ways that that can actually be done. So for example, if we're doing a lot of outsourcing because of capacity, then if we increase our efficiency, we can bring that manufacturing back in house. And uh, that cost difference between uh, shipping it out and building it internally can be part of the value proposition. In addition, if we are capacity constrained, then we can say that there's a potential revenue uplift. If we can make more, we could sell more. And so we can uh, put in not only what is our current revenue, but what's our estimated uh, potential revenue uplift. Uh, we can look at direct labor reduction. So we can look at overtime spending and so forth. We can look at uh, capital uh, expenditure avoidance. Uh, if we have uh, new machines in our budget, uh, we may be able to avoid those if we can make our existing machines more effective and so forth. And so essentially what we're doing is we're just looking for all of those different financial inputs that would go into determining the value proposition. Then uh, we go through what are the functional inputs? What are the you know, existing states within the plant? And we can estimate what is our current OEE if we don't have an exact number. And we can look at things like lead time and so forth that uh, we need to know so that we can estimate what the improvement is going to be upon those. So then the next step is to go to uh, those causals that are tied to each one of the different uh, opportunities. And so in this particular case, uh, we're looking at OEE again. And for that, what we're trying to determine is what percentage of our losses are due to something like unplanned stops versus changeover time versus short stops, et cetera. And if we have exact numbers, we can actually put those into uh, the system here. But if we don't have the exact numbers, what we can do is we can actually now uh, look at uh, how these relate to one another. So maybe uh, you know, our change over time is medium 
and uh, short stops here are uh, you know very high or just high. Uh, unplanned stops might be very high. Uh, reduced speed might be uh, very low. Uh, production scrap might be uh, low, and setup scrap might be low as well. Um, uh, forgot to do that. So I need to do these one at a time. Uh, it was low also. This was low. This was actually medium. And this is uh, very high. So all this does is uh, if you were watching these estimated current values change as I was changing those percentages, uh, this is just uh, looking at how these rank relative to one another. So if I change this from high, to very high, you'll see this number go up and everything else go down uh, because it's just looking to allocate how much of that loss is due to each one of these different factors. Now for each one of these factors, uh, I can also now start to estimate how much improvement do I think I can make in my unplanned stops. And I do that by clicking on this link to the enablers. And it is a live demo. <laughs> and let's see. Okay, we'll pick a different one. So within that, uh, so now for change over time, what I can do is I can look at uh, you know, how much, what are the different set of things that I can do as a business when I have that smart factory solution in place? And so it may be that I can, you know, enable my lean program and make that lean program more effective. Uh, I can improve the way that I run Kaizen events uh, because I'll have, I'll be able to target those more effectively if I know where the problems are in the shop floor and I'll have more data that I can use within those Kaizen events. Um, I might be able to, uh, you know, look at alerts and how I can eliminate waste uh, using those alerts and react more quickly when, uh, you know, I see those things in place. And I might be able to deliver documentation live to the line to uh, utilize standard work more effectively and so forth. And so there are different things that I can do uh, to eliminate or to mitigate the change over time um, and adjustment. And for change over time, actually standard work is a big deal. And so what I can do is I can say that, you know, if I can uh, really standardize how my change over times are done by having those work instructions, you know, right there at the cell, you know, I might be able to make a, you know, pretty high impact on um, how quickly those are done. Uh, from a timeline perspective, I can say, is that something that as soon as I turn the software on, this will this change will uh, be in effect? Or is this something that's going to be, you know, going ramp up over time? And for standardized work, if I don't have those work procedures already defined, it's going to take me a while to create those. So I'm actually going to say that this is, you know, a long time, which in my configuration I have set up to be a year. Uh, before I actually see the benefits from that standard work. And actually, you know, maybe let's make that six months because it's not going to take me a full year uh, before I start to see that. And then I can say, does this change happen at the line level, at the plant level, at the corporate level, and so forth? And, you know, in this case, I'm going to say it happens at the plant level. And then I can also uh, say, is this something that I, I know it's going to work? As soon as I turn this on, it's 100% guaranteed I'm going to get the benefit from that. Or can I say that, you know, it's a toss up. I don't know. People may adopt it. They may not. Or I can discount it by different uh, percentages within there. Um, in this case, I'm pretty sure that if the standard work is there and it's available, people will follow it. And so I'm going to leave that there and I'm going to uh, say, okay. And so then what this has done is now I've I said that I'm going to be able to get a significant benefit from that. And now I can go back to uh, my uh, causal inputs and I can you know, see how much of an impact I'm gonna have there. 
And basically we just walk through that same process for each one of the different opportunities. And once we're done with that process, uh, then we can look at the output. We're done, that's it. And so now we look at the value summary here and Uh, when I look at that value summary, I can see how much of the you know, output or how much of value I'm creating by addressing those different causes of uh, the current performance. And I can see that across uh, my OEE benefits, my lead time, overtime benefits, you know, et cetera. And I can see on a percentage basis where those benefits are coming from. And I've got my financial dashboard to say, you know, my return on investment percentage is 670%. My year one payback, I'm going to get basically a four times uh, payback on my investment. Uh, my net present value of the entire project is over 3 million. And my internal rate of return is 450%. So this is definitely something that I want to do as an organization. And these are just you know, some of the rate factors and so forth that I'm using to make these calculations. So my net present value rate factor is 38%. My cost of capital is very cheap right now at 2%. Uh, my carrying cost percentage is at basically 30 and my gross margin percentage is 43%. And so uh, those are the numbers that I'm using to translate, uh, for instance, the gross margin percentage, uh, translate that revenue to an annual impact to the bottom line. Uh, the carrying cost percentage means that, um, you know, however much uh, my inventory savings are from a raw dollar perspective of inventory, uh, the bottom line impact of that is, you know, 29% uh, of that. And so that allows me to take the kind of one-time cash flow impacts and turn that into an actual bottom line impact. We also have additional impacts uh, that are non-quantified in terms of uh, things like doing less expediting, uh, higher quality of life at work, uh, better schedule adherence, improved customer perception, and so forth that are definite benefits, but you know it's very difficult to quantify. So then I can see how these phase in over time. If you remember, uh, when we uh, selected each one of those different benefits, we said how long it takes to phase in. And so we can see uh, for each of the different benefits, um, month one, we're not getting much return yet, but in month two and three, we start to ramp that up. Month four, month seven, uh, month 13 and so forth. Now we really start to see those benefits accrue. And we can see kind of our cumulative benefit over time as well. Uh, from an annual uh, opportunity perspective, uh, once we are ramped up, we can see that. And then we can see you know, how much benefit we're getting in the first year versus our three-year total. From a uh, you know, project planning perspective, what this has done is we've looked at all of those different potential enablers that we can put in place. And we can see for each one of those, what is the financial impact of those different benefits? And so our Kaizen process and being able to kind of supercharge that process by having that additional data in place, by putting a structure in place around that, by you know, having our people uh, upskilled and by putting uh, machine learning in place to help them do the analysis and so forth, uh, we're getting a significant financial impact from that. And so that's gotta be one of our key uh, practices that we look at as we're doing the implementation of not only do we need to put the software in place and get the data flowing, but we need to really focus on how do we upskill our people so that they can run uh, their improvement projects more effectively, because that's going to be a tremendous lever for us in getting the gains that we're looking at. And so this gives us not only what are those potential benefits and so forth, but actually ties that into uh, implementation plan for not just the software, but how do we need to change uh, the culture and the process of the organization to effectively utilize those solutions. We can also see now how that actually ties together. So if I look at uh, that Kaizen process, um, the, you know, for Kaizen as an enabler, that's tied to you know, unplanned stops. If I run my Kaizens more effectively, I'm going to be able to 
uh, you know, run Kaizans on my major downtime reasons. And I think I can get a 10% improvement uh, in those unplanned stops as a result of that. Uh, if I look at that, I, it's going to take me a year to have the data available for that. Uh, so, you know, this is something that's going to take time to ramp up. I have to have enough data. I have to put that training in place. I have to upskill my people. But once that's there, I'm going to be able to get that big improvement. And uh, when I improve my unplanned stops, that actually ties into OEE, certainly, uh, because if I improve my, if I reduce my unplanned stops, I'll improve my OEE. Uh, it improves my lead time because if my lead time is impacted by uh, that downtime, uh, then you know that'll get better. Uh, overtime, I might be running overtime because uh, machine goes down, and then I've got to make up for that. You know, over you know after hours and so forth. And I can see how uh, that unplanned stops is tied into each one of those different opportunities. And then those opportunities themselves are tied into the different financial line items. So we talked about OEE earlier and how if you improve your OEE, uh, you can avoid uh, outsourcing, you can improve your revenues, you can reduce your direct labor, uh, CapEx avoidance, and so forth. And so we can see the entire causal chain from improving my Kaizen events through the causes that I'm going to address, uh, what causes or what opportunities or what KPI are impacted by improving that causal factor, and then what financial line items are improved based on that change. And so I have that entire relationship in, in the model. And I can see that graphically uh, by coming here. And so I can see for each one of my different enablers, what are the causals that that's going to address? I can uh, skip up a level and look at the opportunities. And I can see for those enablers, um, what are the different opportunities that are going to improve based on each one of those different causal factors. And then I can also go all the way up to the financial line items and uh, look at the relationship between those. So with that, I can see uh, that visibility of current status and being able to immediately uh, you know, get out to the line when it's having issues is going to help my revenue by a significant amount because I'm going to be able to react faster to downtime and improve my mean time to repair and so forth. So that's a quick overview of the solution. Uh, let me come back to uh, the slides and so forth to wrap up. That's it for today's webinar. I really look forward to having discussions with all of you around uh, this tool and how you might be able to use it within your uh, organizations, no matter where you are on your journey. Uh, being able to you know, take that next step in the journey or to start your journey overall, uh, you need to be able to present to executives how much value you think you're going to be able to get. And so we would love to talk to you and you know, be able to help you out with that. Um, in the coming weeks, we'll be covering a number of uh, other great topics on our webinar Wednesdays. Uh, be sure to go to the Visual Decisions website to register for any of those that are interest you. Uh, we've been in the business of utilizing information from the shop floor to improve operations since about 2002. Um, we help you combine the smart factory and the lean factory to drive improvements to all the things we've talked about today. So thank you. Um, if you have questions or would like to walk through how to apply all of these things in your company, uh, please reach out to us, uh, give us a call, send us an email, go to the link, set up a meeting directly, or reach out to me on LinkedIn. Uh, thank you. Bye-bye.